Well, <coughs> this is <coughs> a rather nice little Mammoth SE1 model steam engine from around about 1946. Uh, I really like these uh, early Mammoth steam engines with their um, uh, hot stamp brass engine mounts and the disc crank flywheels. They're just, I, there's something about them that I, re I really, really like. I've never seen one that was all black before, which this one appears to be. Someone's painted the base black. It's missing a few parts. Uh, both the exhaust steam pipe and main steam pipe are missing, but that's uh, very easy to replace. It should have four small rubber feet which are riveted onto the corners. Uh, the rivets are there, but the feet are, are long gone. So it really, it, it's going to need a lot of work. It needs a lot of cleaning up, um, repaint on the base and, and the engine mount. So uh, yeah, now as it happens, I have another one of these. So in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I did earlier. Yeah, now if we close in on those a bit, you can see that there is a difference between these two. Um, there we go. Now, when I got the first one, it was missing the piston and cylinder. And this was a long time ago. I didn't have the facilities in those days to make a replacement. So I used a more modern mammoth cylinder and uh, with a shortened conrod um, to replace the missing cylinder. But as you can see, this cylinder is much larger in diameter than this one. They're just initially, the early ones were much, much bigger. You know, um, so there is a, there was there was a difference there, but other than that, that they are they are identical. So uh, hopefully, when I am done with the restoration on this little matey, it will look something like that. <laughs> okay, let's get on and get it stripped down. Well, it's very easy to strip down the little mammoth. Um, there's hardly anything to it. But also because it's so small, all, my, I, all the brass parts will actually fit in my ultrasonic cleaner. So this is a great opportunity to use the Horoline brass cleaner uh, on, on some on some really nice brass parts, and I've not actually used it on a boiler yet. So this will be this will be interesting. There you can see all the little parts crammed in there. Just fits in there nicely. Uh, and hopefully we're having some very nice weather here in the UK at the moment. So what I will probably do is run this outside on an extension lead because as I said in the video I did on this when I used the Horoline for the first time, the Horoline really stinks. <laughs> so we'll probably do it outside. But it only takes 15 minutes. Well, it takes a little bit longer for the for the ultrasonic cleaner to heat the fluid up. But yeah, it doesn't take long at all. So that's where we're going with this. And I'll bring you back when it's done. Well, here are the uh, brass parts after they've come out of the ultrasonic cleaner um, using the Horoline solution. And um, it's done quite a good job. I'm wondering whether or not the Horoline is um, stuff that is aged because it doesn't hasn't done as good a job as it did the last time I used it on brass. I mean, this was very heavily tarnished, uh, as you can see if you look back at the previous previous part of the video but it's done quite a good job and it's cleaned it up reasonably well so the rest we will do using the normal techniques of wire wheel and polishing and stuff to get all that looking looking like new again and then we'll have to move on to the base plate and the fire blocks okay so after the parts came out of the ultrasonic cleaner and the horoline solution uh, i've done some wire wheel work on them have a look at the, all the small parts were simply cleaned up uh, including the boiler strap using my brass wire wheel so they're they're pretty much all ready to to go to their next stage the engine frame obviously still need, needs to be painted as does the boiler strap uh, let's come back out again um, the boiler is uh, not quite finished yet all i've done to that since it came out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner is um, i've used my polishing wheel on it and um, it's come up really really nicely now uh, a couple of things that uh, that i've done since 
that I will close in on it and show you. I don't know how well you can see this, but <clears throat> there was a dent in the chimney just about there. It looked like someone hit it with center punch. It was quite a deep dent. And there was a few other, um, there was a few other dents as well around the chimney that um, needed to be sorted out. And also the top, the, the rim around the top of the chimney, that was quite deformed as well. So what did I do? How did I sort that out? Now it's not perfect. There's still a few dents in it, but it's a hell of a lot better than it was before I started. Well, I, uh, this is a technique that um, Keith Appleton has used successfully on his channel. And this is where I got it from. And basically what you do is you heat the part with the, the dent in it. So you localize the heat. I actually had this supported on a piece of wood and clamped in the vise. And I heated this up, this area here, till it was red hot. Same with the rim, then let it cool down. That obviously softens the brass. And then I made a form tool, which is this thing here. Simple, simple, simply turned it down on the lathe, bit of steel, turned it down on the lathe so that it would fit. It was the correct diameter for the inside of the chimney. And then again, supporting, supporting the boiler on some wood clamped in the vise. I just tapped, gently tapped this down the, the, the chimney uh, as far as it will go and that helped to remove the dents in the chimney. Now I'm sure there are other ways of doing it, you know, but this this worked actually worked worked quite well. And then for the, the top of the chimney, where you can see the lip, the beveled lip, um, use another form tool. <laughs> and these are really useful to have a couple of, well, a selection of sizes in the workshops. Use a couple of, um, I've got several different sizes in the, of these. They're just ball bearings. And um, very simple. You Again, you clamp, you clamp it in the vise. Let me... I need two hands for this. So yeah, yeah, so you clamp it in the vise and basically you just rest your ball bearing on the top like that and give it a quiet, gentle tap. You don't have to do it because this is now, the brass is now quite soft. You could just gently tap the ball bearing and that will perfectly reform the beveled edge around the top of the chimney. And I've used this successfully many times. Now one of the other jobs that you have to do if you're uh, restoring a, a, a small model steam engine like this Mammoth, is that you will have some nuts, very small ones like 6BA, or these are actually 4BA, uh, which will need cleaning. And there's, again, uh, this is not the only way to do it. This is the way I do it. I find it to, to be uh, quite successful and easy to do. So, you know, it might be obvious to a lot of you out there, but I'm going to show you anyway, because, you know, what's obvious to one person isn't always obvious to everyone else. So this is what I do come back out again so <clears throat> what I do is I take a piece of studying of the right uh, thread size in this case it's 6BA then getting my hand completely in the way of the camera put the nuts on the nut you want to clean up put another nut on first then you put the nut that you want to clean up on second bring them up together Get a couple of spanners, 6BA in this case, and then just lock the two nuts together. And that will work absolutely fine. And then you basically take whatever is your holding device of choice. In my case, obviously it's the uh, uh, much raved about on my channel, Miller's Fool's hand vise. And you simply clamp the bit of studding in there and you're all ready to go to present it up to the wire wheel, and that works really well. I, I've uh, had great success with that. Uh, a very easy way of holding um, nuts, small nuts uh, that need to be cleaned, uh, and it works. I mean, obviously you've got to <laughs> take them off and turn them around to do both faces, but it's a small price to pay. That works very, very well indeed. So, okay, what's next then? Well, I've cleaned up the boiler band. So obviously that needs repainting. I've cleaned up the outside of the firebox. I've got to go in there with a small wire brush on the on the Hilda to clean up the inside of that. And then that will be sprayed with the XHT high temperature engine paint. I've got to find some paint that will uh, do for the, en the engine frame. And um, 
Oh yes, we've got to make some copper pipe. Yes, I need to make up some pipes for the main steam pipe and the exhaust pipe because they were missing on this. Uh, and also, oh yes, and the base. The base needs to be done. Must remember to do the base. Well, we're getting fairly close to reassembling the little mammoth. I've used the XHT paint on the boiler strap and the firebox. That's all come up nicely. I've repainted the base. Right bugger getting the old black paint off of that, but we got there in the end. Uh, repainted the flywheel. And we're pretty much ready to go put it back together. I've got some 1 8 copper pipe to make the uh, steam pipes out of, which were missing. But I wonder if any, anybody here can spot my cock up. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, but it's still a cock up. The engine frame, I, I actually primed the engine frame and what I should have done right, <laughs> is uh, dry assembled the whole thing and then made the copper pipes up because they solder into the engine frame. The exhaust goes in there and the main feed pipe goes in there um, before painting it. So as I said, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I shall probably have to re-etch prime it after I've soldered the pipes in place and then we'll put the top coat on. But yeah, so the next thing is to put it together so I can measure up and, and um, make the copper pipes for the main steam pipe and the exhaust.